Machine learning is a very large field with many different methods and many different applications. I will now define some of the very basic terminology that's being used to distinguish different machine learning methods. Let's start with the what. What is being learned? You can learn parameters, like the probabilities of a base network. You can learn structure, like the arc structure of a base network. And you might even discover hidden concepts. For example, you might find that certain training examples form a hidden group. Uh, for example, if you're Netflix, you might find that there's different types of customers. Some that care about classic movies, some of them care about modern movies. And those might form hidden concepts whose discovery can really help you and make better sense of the data. Next is what from? Every machine learning method is driven by some sort of target information that you care about. In supervised learning, which is the subject of today's class, we're given specific target labels, and i give you examples just in a second. We also talk about unsupervised learning, where target labels are missing, and we use replacement principles to find, for example, hidden concepts. Later, there will be a class on reinforcement learning, when an agent learns from feedback with the physical environment by interacting and trying actions and receiving some sort of evaluation from the environment like, well done, or that hurts. Again, we will talk about those in detail later. There's different things you could try to do with machine learning technique. You might care about prediction. For example, you might want to care what's going to happen in the future, in the stock market, for example. You might care to diagnose something, which is you get data and you wish to explain it and use machine learning for that. Sometimes the objective is to summarize something. For example, if you uh, read a long article, your machine learning method might aim to produce a short article that summarizes the long article. And there's many, many, many more different things. You can talk about the how to learn. You use the word passive. If your learning agent is just an observer and has no impact on the data itself, Otherwise, we call it active. Sometimes learning occurs online, which means by the data is being generated. And sometimes it's offline, which means learning occurs after the data has been generated. There's different types of outputs of a machine learning algorithm. Today, we'll talk about classification versus regression. In classification, the output is binary or a fixed number of classes. For example, something is either a chair or not. Regression is continuous. The temperature might be 66.5 degrees in our uh, prediction. And there's tons of internal details that talk, people talk about. Just to name one, people distinguish generative from discriminative. Generative seeks to model the data as generally as possible versus discriminant methods seek to distinguish data. And this might sound like a superficial distinction, but has enormous ramification on the learning algorithm. Now, to tell you the truth, it took me many years to fully learn all these words here. And I don't expect you to pick them all up in one class, but you should as well know that they exist. And as they come up, I'll emphasize them so you can resort any learning method and tell you back into the specific taxonomy over here. The vast amount of work in the field falls into the area of supervised learning. In supervised learning, you're given for each training example a feature vector and a target label called Y. For example, for a credit rating agency, X1, X2, X3 might be features such as is the person employed, what is the salary of the person, has the person previously reported on a credit card, and so on. And why is a predictor whether the person is to default on the credit or not? Now, machine learning is typically carried out on past data where the credit rating agency might have collected feature sets like these and actual occurrences of default or not. And what it wishes to produce is a function that allows us to predict future customers. So if a new person comes in with a different feature vector, can we predict as good as possible the functional relationship between these features x1 to xn all the way to y. You can apply the exact same example in image recognition, where x might be pixels of images, 
or it might be features of things found in images, and why might be a label that says whether a certain object is contained in an image or not. Now in supervised learning, you're given many such examples, x21 to x2n leads to y2, all the way to index m. This is called your data. If we call each input vector xm, then we wish to find another function that given any xm or any future vector x produces as close as possible my target signal y. Now this isn't always possible and sometimes it's acceptable, in fact preferable, to tolerate a certain amount of error in your training data. But the subject of machine learning is to identify this function over here. And once you identify it, you can use it for future axes that weren't part of the training set to produce a prediction that hopefully is really, really good. So let me ask you a question. And this is a question for which I haven't given you the answer, but I'd like to appeal to your intuition. Here is one data set with the axis one-dimensionally plotted horizontally and the y's vertically. And suppose the data looks like this. Suppose my machine learning algorithm gives me two hypotheses. One is this function over here, which is a linear function, and one is this function over here. I'd like to know which of the functions you find preferable as an explanation for the data. Is it function A or function B? Check here for A, here for B, and here for neither.